The UFC's lightweight division has officially reached a point of real stability, folks. And yeah, sure, last weekend's UFC 269 saw a champion defend his belt, not win it. But in many ways, for Charles Oliveira to beat Dustin Poirier in the fashion that he did, it certainly did legitimize him as the rightful king of this excellent weight class. Now moving forward, we can at least relax in the knowledge that while there are many exciting contenders beneath him, Dobronx has managed to take out the guy in Poirier, who many had been calling the uncrowned champion of the division. And if getting his hand raised wasn't enough, the manner in which Charles won and dominated the later portions of the fight is what truly makes his reputation what it is here, in the week after this latest victory. There were layers to this performance that really made it a statement from Oliveira, one that will likely see him take Poirier's position on the pound for pound rankings as fifth when they update. The fight was obviously a banger, a high paced showdown on the feet that eventually gave way to some excellent Oliveira top game in the second round. And while we all know just how lethal Oliveira can be on the mat, I enjoyed his composure as he worked away from the top in the second round, as he damaged Dustin, who seemed pretty content to ride the round out. And though we know that Poirier during fight week repeatedly expressed his regret over his haste when getting caught in a choke by Khabib, instead of just surrendering the round, it says a lot about the danger that Oliveira possesses, that his opponent practically refused to do anything as soon as he found himself on the bottom. But even more so than the maturity and risk assessment that Charles consistently displayed, I loved his bodywork on the feet, especially those knees to the midsection that really seemed to hurt Poirier. Everything that you'd expect from Oliveira was on show, those snapping front kicks, his willingness to trade, and above all other things, the heart he managed to show, once again defying our preconceived notions by picking himself up off the mat in moments of real danger. He's done an excellent job at shedding his reputation as someone who can be broken, who can be pushed to quit under pressure. He proved that progression against Michael Chandler, and once again when the going got tough in there with Poirier. Early on, I did think that Dustin was doing an excellent job at capitalizing on one of the major weaknesses in Charles's game, his defense on the feet and how he can sometimes be found to be lacking in head movement. But Oliveira fought through it, and rebounded with a much better showing in the second round, before then once again building on that lead in the third to find a finish. And when it came, it was a nightmare situation for Poirier, put into effect by Charles in the earliest stages of that second round, where Dustin had already conceded his points on the scorecards to, in his own words, avoid giving up his back. Unfortunately for him, it was a bad situation that turned disastrous straight off the bat, as Charles managed to find his way into that exact position just seconds into the third round. And from there, almost as if his second round hesitancy foreshadowed it, the clock began to tick down on Poirier's chances in this matchup and shortly after, the tap came. On a quick side note, if you're enjoying this content and would like to stay up to date with all of our weekly uploads, be sure to subscribe to the channel before leaving a like and a comment to keep YouTube's algorithms fully aware of the fact that we are fast becoming the proud owner of the most submission finishes in MMA YouTube history, forcing the tap out of all of these other channels. Also, we recently set up a Patreon account, so if you want to help support the channel, the option is now there to subscribe and unlock some exclusive content and opportunities to engage. Now, what can we say about Charles Oliveira on the back of this first defense of his title? Well, this is undoubtedly the biggest win of his career, a victory that in many ways stands as more of a coronation for him than even his title winning performance against Michael Chandler. If the last win got him the belt, this was the one that earned him undisputed status. And though we've all slowly come around to this guy's greatness in recent years, this victory for me is one that catapults his stock to another level entirely. Because it had a bit of everything we needed to see from the champion who's going to lead this division out of what was something of a murky period. I do think that Oliveira, above all but one of the other top 15 lightweights, is the most capable of extending his streak of defenses into different territory. But even though I feel as though Gaethje is next in line, the more I think about the top 5 clash between Benil Dariush and Islam Makachev, the more I believe that the winner will be in the perfect position to make a very strong claim in their own right, if the timing with Justin Gaethje doesn't work out. Because if one fighter within this current 155 pound crop can prove to be a more successful champion than Oliveira, in my opinion it's Makachev. And look, I don't know for sure that he's going to be able to style on Charles if the fight hits the mat, but if I am to assume that he gets past Dariush, which will of course be an interesting stylistic matchup in its own right, I do think that he poses a very serious threat to the champion. And I'll have to see that bout against Benil first to really make an informed decision on how that might play out, as far as my prediction goes. But for now, we can't deny that Charles is the number one guy. I mean, obviously he is, he's the champion. But the manner in which he proceeded to totally dominate from the second round onwards tells you all you need to know about Oliveira 2.0, or 3.0, or 4, whatever, whatever number we're on. So yeah, if he's looking for a reasonably quick turnaround, set up the Gaethje fight. And to be honest, either way, I would imagine that Justin will get it first, over the winner of Dariush Makachev. It just seems like that's what the promotion will do. But even 
with this newfound stability at £155, it's pretty safe to say that 2022 is going to be one hell of a year for the division as this current generation of contenders begin to move in and circle like sharks. For Poirier, that was a tough night at the office, that's for sure. But if he does want to continue, he'll no doubt find himself within touching distance of another shot at the belt if he can string a few victories together. Obviously, the McGregor fight is there for him if both parties are interested, but it's hard not to feel for the guy after he was unable to build on his promising start. For me personally, I, like a lot of you, think a matchup with Michael Chandler would be an absolute treat, and though I would favour Dustin's endurance and power to be the difference, I'd also bet on fireworks. So yeah, the final pay-per-view of the year certainly delivered, and we'll of course be covering several of the bouts from that night this week, so keep an eye on your subscriptions over the coming days. But what did you make of Charles Oliveira's stunning first defence of his UFC lightweight title? And between him and Justin Gaethje, who do you think of the two, is most likely to leave the arena with UFC gold? Do let us know your opinions in the comment section below, we always love to hear from you guys. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment before subscribing to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of our latest uploads. Patreon link is in the description, and as always, thank you for watching.